Aloha. I'm Tim Apicella, host for Rediscovering America. It's January the 12th. Welcome to our special edition of Rediscovering America, the insurrection at the Capitol. Uh, the videos you're going to see today or later today, um, one is from Arnold Schwarzenegger and one is from Michael Moore. The video from Michael Moore is, um, it's a long one, but it's worth watching. Now, this is the same Michael Moore who documented the Columbine School Massacre. Uh, in that, that documentary, he predicted there would be multiple more school shootings to follow, and he certainly was proven correct about that. This is Michael Moore, who early on pounded a steady drumbeat that zero weapons of mass destruction would be found in Iraq. As you recall, the weapons of mass destruction was the basis of the US invasion in the start of the Iraq war. This is the same Michael Moore who was a near lone voice telling America that Donald Trump would indeed win the election of the presidential 2016, yet was dismissed as a liberal alarmist. Now, Mr. Moore is issuing a urgent call to be vigilant between now and the inauguration of President-elect Biden. He's imploring that adequate security measures be implemented and now to meet with Donald Trump's agreed followers, the white supremacists, those that are convinced of Trump's big lie, the big lie that the election was fixed and victory is stolen away from Donald Trump. Our fellow citizens may attempt a violent show of force to retain Donald Trump for a second term. Since this video was recorded on Saturday, January the 9th, the FBI has issued a warning bulletin to all 50 governors to expect planned armed gatherings in all 50 state capitals. So as you watch this video later this evening, watch and judge for yourself if this could happen in America, the violent challenge of a certified legal election. And further, ask yourself if you could even imagine the violent invasion of our nation's capital was even plausible. With us today is Jay Fidel. We're here to discuss what happened uh, on last Wednesday. And Jay, welcome. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for having me. You know, Jay, I, you know, there's so many things that have transpired since Wednesday, but as, as like an onion being peeled, we're learning more and more about this, this mob, this invasion of the Capitol. Uh, certainly was spurred on by Donald Trump and inflamed by Donald Trump and his son and Rud Rudolph Giuliani and, and, and then further uh, the complicit guilty, the members of uh, Congress that stood by and said nothing and, and were complicit in the big lie and still are complicit in the big lie that Donald Trump had the election stolen from him, which has only inflamed uh, many millions of Donald Trump's followers. What else could we add to this? Well, I thought it was very interesting that the first, the first shots, the first video shots of the event at, at the Capitol were distance shots. And it looked like there were a lot of people milling around. You didn't get the detail. Um, but then as the, as the day wore on last Wednesday, and as the weekend came and wore on, the shots got to be closer. I'm not sure how they got that video. And think about it, you know, all these people are milling around and doing dangerous things, attacking people. It was a violent mob. They could have killed the cameraman just as easy. So who were the cameramen? Who were the cameramen who were inside the Capitol, who took those close-up pictures and gave them to the video, to the, uh, the television stations, the, uh, the news stations? Well, there had to be people who were involved. I doubt it was, um, you know, the Congress congressmen and women. Um, I doubt it was the police that took pictures of them. Um, I think it was the, the, the stormtroopers themselves. And you know, that's who. a good point, Jay. You know, I just want to interrupt you for a minute on that because we're at a point in society where social media has come to the point where if you do something, uh, if you don't have it on video, then it never happened. So these proud Trump followers are obviously very proud of where they were at that moment in time and what they did. And they wanted to share it with the other followers and say, see, look at, look at what a great job I've done. And if I just told you that I did this, you wouldn't believe me, but I have to show you. So they post these videos on various media, social backgrounds, and guess what? That's where the police have, are, are getting these things right now. And they're arresting these people right now. And there's, uh, the DOJ has 170 open cases right now. And that's going to expand to hundreds and hundreds more. Yeah, so vanity. Uh, vanity is what took them to uh, get these things posted. Vanity and social media—the very same social media channels that 
caused the thing in the first place. It's really interesting. And I don't think these guys realized at the time that that social media would go wide, wide far beyond the people they might have sent it to or posted it with. And uh, the, the, the media caught it. Uh, I wonder if some of them try to sell it to the media, actually. The media would have been very hungry for that on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, but by Sunday, you know, we began to see a different picture. It wasn't, a, it wasn't just a protest. It, it was an insurrection. And it was, it was mean. It was violent. It was uh, lethal even, carrying around those straps to tie people up with, carrying around guns and lead pipes, carrying around you know, um, uh, all kinds of explosives. And these guys, these guys were completely out of control. And I know I suspect that a, a, a person who observed this from a psychological, sociological point of view, and listen, we're gonna hear more about this and listen to Trump's remarks as he whipped them up, you know, just really outside the Capitol. That was footage also that shocked me to see his remarks with the Capitol in the background. It was, you know, 100 yards, 200 yards away. It was right there. He was, he was organizing a protest that, that wouldn't have taken but minutes for that crowd to get to the Capitol. Well, um, whipped them up, Jay, but not only whipped them up, but was, a, was delight, delighted. And that's the word Ben Sass, Senator Ben Sass from Nebraska used, that Donald Trump was delighted as he's watching events unfold um, of this, you know, them storming the doors. And he was perplexed and disappointed why others weren't ex as excited as he was. Um, I mean, talk about the arsonist with glee uh, and, and watching his own fire that he started, although he didn't carry the match and, and struck the match, he certainly provided all the accelerant. Oh, I, I suspect he struck the match too. He knew what he was dealing with and he knew that he ripped them up to the point where all he had to do was light them up that, that afternoon and then off they went. He knew they were prepared. He knew they were carrying weapons. He suggested they should carry weapons. Um, and so, uh, the, you know, the other thing is, uh, I, it was really shocking to find that um, two things, the White House went dark that night, turned off the lights. None of those spotlights you usually see in the White House were on. And the, the flag, you know, in, in honor of, of the death of four people, and especially a uh, Capitol policeman, uh, was half mast all over the place, um, but not at the White House. Yeah. It was full mast. And finally, you know, the word is that um, he sat there and watched television, made no effort to bring in anybody who would respond, um, neither that day nor any time since. He was just, as you say, delighted. This is well, he, this is, he this has, is it's reported ahead. that he regrets coming out and saying that, um, you know, he only supports law and order and. You know, he's being perceived by his loyal followers that they're being thrown under the bus when he came out with his statement about we will prosecute to the, the extent of justice, all those that were involved with this capital invasion. Um, there, there are many Trump followers now are, are extremely angry at Trump because he, they felt that he threw them under the bus with that statement. A couple of thoughts about that. You know, if you look at his um, messaging, um, what do they call it? His um, the messaging he gives to his army over the years. It's always kind of like with a wink and a blink, you know. I want I want you to go out there and and destroy the place, but you know, let's do it do, peacefully. Do so destroy peacefully. it peacefully. Yeah. You know the the messaging he the wink and the blink thing, and it's always mixed like that, so he can have some kind of arguable deniability. But the message is clear to any human being what he's saying. You know, it's always clear what he's saying. Stand by and stand up, remember that? Uh, and so forth. I mean, he, maybe he uses cute language, but he knows they're out there and they are standing there waiting for him. So while some, some of the insurrectionists uh, might feel that he, he let them down, he certainly let them down when he said he was gonna walk with them, didn't walk with them, went back to watch them, that's really cute. Um, they may be ticked off because he didn't walk with them and, you know, he's not standing by his original instructions and he's saying, um, you know, they, they violated the law. But, the, but the, the real point is that it was a wink and a blink. Yeah. And most of, those, most of those insurrectionists knew that it was a wink and a blink and what he was really messaging them to do. 
what do they call dog whistling them yeah. to do is go bust the place up. So you know, it, it, it was reported that it was the attorneys and, and I think Ivanka who, who not grabbed him by the collar literally, but figuratively and said, we've got legal culpability here. You've got to get out there and make some statements that you're above and away from this. And that was his first, you know, his first crack at it. What? 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half uh, after the, you know, the storming of the Capitol, he finally said, you know, go home. We love you in your special. Uh, yeah, we know. love you because you are destroying the Capitol. Now there's a and dog you're special whistle for because you. Because you listen to my voice to do it. Yeah. So I mean, I think any any reasonable judge or jury or member of the public, um, any 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 member, and I mean, I can't imagine anybody denying that he he provoked that. He incited it, and uh, there's a specific provision in the Constitution uh, that that says that he cannot hold office. It's Section Three of uh, the Fourteenth Amendment. Fourteenth Amendment. There might be a legal argument about whether or not that applies, but I think it applies. Yeah. Hey, you and know we're I... going to see a video with um, Arnold Schwarzenegger here in a minute, but I, I want to touch on one last point. Since Wednesday, we've seen a lot of backpedaling from the GOP, both in the House of Representatives and the Senate. Uh, right now, many of them are calling for um, unity and. Um, um, bipartisanship and moving ahead and, and forgetting to all talk about the 25th Amendment and impeachment. Let's just move forward as, as Americans. I find that comical and disgusting. Uh, frankly, quite frankly, someone's going to have to account for what has happened here. And part of that is Donald Trump. But equally important is what about those 140 uh, House representatives and the six senators that uh, bought the big lie, promoted the big lie, and, and, and wouldn't give in on the big lie just to make Donald Trump happy. Should we back off from impeachment or the 25th? Not a chance. It's a crock for them to say now, let's back off and, and make peace. <clears throat> they violated the law. They, they went a long way to bring this country down. They have to be prosecuted, and um, they must be held accountable for that. You know, we posted a list of all of them on think tech, just so the world knows. And I, I believe the world ought to keep that list just to know who's where. At the moment of crisis, after the Capitol had been attacked, they came back inside in this total crisis of democracy and they continued to vote uh, to throw out the election. Incredible on the basis of untrue statements by Trump, still demonstrating loyalty to Trump, even after Trump had had effectively created this insurrection and threatened our nation. And they have to be held accountable. I, I feel very strongly about that. And I think most people do. Uh, and I think most members of Congress do. And I think the people, the, that 147 in the Senate and the House ought to hang their heads in shame. They ought to resign, every one of them. Immediately. Immediately. I agree. I agree. Okay, we're gonna see a video here uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I believe he recorded this on Monday. Uh, the first few minutes are very poignant. And, and I think one of the things I wanna just point out before we see that video is his mention about how people followed along with the lies, then more lies, and then ultimately the big lie. And, and, and how they felt after the war was over and you know Germany was in complete ruins, bombed out shell, and how bad they felt um, not physically, but psychologically, that they participated in not speaking up, not standing up, not calling out a lie, and how that affected them um, personally. And so his, his recollection as a, a young boy uh, during those years was, is very poignant and I think worthwhile to watch it now because it does apply to those senators and those House representatives and their participation in Donald Trump's big lie. And again, what is the big lie? That the election was stolen from him, that his his victory was thwarted and through through fraud and, and more fraud. Uh, the big lie. And it, it's got to stop. And these senators and House representatives need to stand up and say, I apologize for, for propagating that. As an immigrant to this country, I would like to say a few words to my fellow Americans to our friends around the world about the events of recent days. Now, I grew up in Austria. I'm very aware of Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass. 
It was a night of rampage against the Jews carried out in 1938 by the Nazi equivalent of the Proud Boys. Wednesday was the day of broken glass right here in the United States. The broken glass was in the windows of the United States Capitol. But the mob did not just shatter the windows of the Capitol. They shattered the ideals we took for granted. They did not just break down the doors of the building that housed the American democracy. They trampled the very principles on which our country was founded. Now, I grew up in the ruins of a country that suffered the loss of its democracy. I was born in 1947, two years after the Second World War. Growing up, I was surrounded by broken men drinking away their guilt over their participation in the most evil regime in history. Not all of them were rabid anti-Semites or Nazis. Many just went along, step by step, down the road. They were the people next door. Now, I've never shared this so publicly because it is a painful memory. But my father would come home drunk once or twice a week, and he would scream and hit us and scare my mother. I did not hold him totally responsible because our neighbor was doing the same thing to his family, and so was the next neighbor over. I heard it with my own ears and saw it with my own eyes. They were in physical pain from the shrapnel in their bodies and in emotional pain from what they saw or did. It all started with lies and lies and lies and intolerance. So being from Europe, I've seen firsthand how things can spin out of control. I know there is a fear in this country and all over the world that something like this could happen right here. Now, I do not believe it is, but I do believe that we must be aware of the dire consequences of selfishness and cynicism. President Trump sought to overturn the results of an election and of a fair election. He sought a coup by misleading people with lies. My father and our neighbors were misled also with lies and I know where such lies lead. President Trump is a failed leader. He will go down in history as the worst president ever. The good thing is that he soon will be as irrelevant as an old tweet. But what are we to make of those elected officials who have enabled his lies and his treachery? I will remind them of what Teddy Roosevelt said. Patriotism means to stand by the country. It does not mean to stand by the president. Now John F. Kennedy wrote a book called Profiles in Courage. A number of members of my own party, because of their own spinelessness, would never see their names in such a book, I guarantee you. They're complicit with those who carried the flag of self-righteous insurrection into the Capitol. But it did not work. Our democracy held firm. Within hours, the Senate and the House of Representatives were doing the people's business and certifying the election of President-elect Biden. What a great display of democracy. Now, I grew up Catholic. I went to church, to Catholic school. I learned the Bible and my catechism and all of this. And from those days, I remember a phrase that is relevant today, a sermon's heart. It means serving something larger than yourself. See, what we need right now from our elected representatives is a public servant's heart. We need public servants that serve something larger than their own power or their own party. We need public servants who will serve higher ideals, the ideals in which this country was founded, the ideals that other countries look up to. Now, over the past few days, friends from all over the world have been calling and calling and calling me, calling me in distraught and worried about us as a nation. One woman was in tears about America, wonderful tears of idealism about what America should be. Those tears should remind us of what America means to the world. Now, I've told everyone who has called that as heartbreaking as all of this is, America will come back from these dark days and shine our lights once again. The message is, could, have, could have been more spot on. You know, Jay, isn't it funny how an immigrant 
has to remind citizens or generations that we've been citizens here on the value of our own democracy and how easy it is to lose it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is an immigrant and a Republican, yet he, he, he it, it, so eloquently uh, describes what and how easy it is to lose our democracy and, and, and put our republic under. Isn't that amazing? He really had it right too. <clears throat> and uh, there is a huge comparison uh, to what happened in Germany in the 30s, huge comparison. And he was there, he knows, uh, <clears throat> from the European experience. You know, one of the things that's uh, likely to happen, I say likely because it's coming from so many sources. You know, at first it was rumor and uh, I heard it from a number of people who, you know, said they heard it from intelligence agencies um, that, uh, you know, this weekend we're, we're going to have another insurrection. In fact, we're going to have insurrections all around the country. Thank, thanks again to Trump, who was again encouraging this. And, um, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're going to be uh, attacking public buildings. Well, if people in the public buildings aren't there, and I probably, they probably won't be there, um, then the buildings themselves will, will be attacked. I suspect that uh, we're going to have, you know, burnings in many states. This is completely intolerable. It is reminiscent of the fire in the, in Germany in the, the Bundestag, and I think we're going to have many of those, those fires around the country. I also hope that the the the, uh, the authorities, including the police, who've had a bad time lately, and you know, and and still need to be cleaned up. Um, and the National Guard and, and for that matter, the army can be there and stand fast, whatever Trump says, protect our institutions. If that means <clears throat> that they have to use violence for dealing with violence, then um, that, that so be it. Um, and that maybe is the only way to deal with these insurrectionists. I think, I think the problem is that a lot of people don't want to do that. They, they would rather stand aside and let it happen. And that's, and that's what happened in Kristallnacht. They stood aside and let it happen. You cannot do that. So what's happening in the next few days is really going to mark the future of the country. We cannot tolerate this again. I, I think both sides will have learned lessons from Wednesday. Um, the, the insurrectionists will have learned that uh, they can go further and do more if they use those guns and use those weapons and, um, and um, not, not leave. Uh, the the army, uh, the military, the police, they should know that they, they can have, they're going to have to stop them. They're going to have to have a show of force and if necessary, use the force. We as a country cannot tolerate this. And we as a country must prosecute the people who are doing it. We have to maintain our you know, own integrity. <clears throat> and I'm sure you heard a, a discussion by the Department of Justice and, and the FBI and some of the uh, um, you know, intelligence and law enforcement agencies this morning. They intend, they fully intend to do that, regardless of what Trump has to say. He's well, I think that's the important part. I think out of the power Department right of now. Justice is moving quick as they can, even on the very superficial charges of trespass or, or theft of mail, to set a tone and an example and a warning for all, all next would-be insurrectionists uh, that try to invade state capitals or any government building that you better think twice about it. And you better think three times if you think you're going to be successful at it. Uh, and so I think that's why we saw this uh, press conference with the Department of Justice and the FBI to actually tell us how many cases, 170, and 70 have been charged, um, that they're serious. And they said hundreds of more are going to be charged. And it's not going to take days, weeks, or even months. It may take a year to identify all the people involved with the storming of the Capitol. And they're going to be charged to one extent or another. And I think that's an important thing to, for us to see because, you know, if there's no consequences to people's actions, no matter how misguided, they'll do them. That's how Hitler rose to power. That's what uh, Schwarzenegger was talking about. <clears throat> so now we have not only the insurrectionists, so I think it's clear they need to be punished and the FBI needs to find them. Um, and I think they're making valiant efforts to do that. And I think the Department of Justice uh, now and under Merrick Garland will, in fact, prosecute them. Um, not because we want vengeance, but because we cannot afford to have this happen. This is central to the continuation of our democracy as we see it. Uh, you know, the vision that those people had when they called Schwarzenegger. 
the other thing is um, Trump can't get away with this. It's not a matter of letting him, you know, uh, walk over, off into the sunset uh, because he won't. He hasn't, he hasn't admitted he was wrong. He hasn't uh, apologized. Um, he hasn't taken any steps to stop what's going on. Matter of fact, he continues to foment the same kind of uprising. <clears throat> the dog whistles to as many people as he can possibly reach. I'm happy the social media stopped him. Um, they've got to continue to stop him. He'll do it again as much as, much as he can. Um, but the bottom line is, uh, I, think, I, think we have, uh, I think we have a problem with Pence. He's not going to do the 25th. And he is supposed to be involved in that, that process. You can't bypass him. You can make all the resolutions you want in the House, but Pence isn't going to do it. So that leaves the House with impeachment. And um, tom tomorrow's Wednesday, they're supposed to vote on it. They should absolutely vote on it. And anybody who votes against it goes in my special book. Um, and, uh, you know, I, and I think the Senate, likewise, they have to vote on it right away. Uh, McConnell cannot stop this one. If you stop this one, you know, wow. It's well, let me, worse I than know the we're, we're running out of time, but let me introduce this idea that the House brings up and votes on impeachment. Nancy Pelosi holds that. Uh, on her desk until the inauguration, and then a week, two weeks, maybe a month later, uh, it's introduced in the Senate where Mitch, and McCon Mitch McConnell is in the back seat. And we have a new, probably Chuck Schumer will be the new, the new um, head of the Senate. And there things will, get, will change. Things will roll along. What do you think about that idea? That's a good tactic. You know, I mean, the people in the uh, insurrectionists have threatened uh, to to have another wild rally, wild insurrection, if um, if Trump is impeached, well that that may that may slow that effort down. I think it's a whole combination of things. It's having military force there. Uh, it's using that strategy you just described, um, take the head off it somehow, but nevertheless do it, um, and and finally to prosecute everyone involved. Those people all have to get prosecuted, and uh, the juries ought to take them seriously. I agree. You know, all in all, this impeachment isn't going to bother Donald Trump that much. What really hurts him is the PGA pulling out of all of his golf courses, and the corporate uh, donations are coming are pulling out exponentially, very very quickly uh, away from Donald Trump. So it's the uh, he's being ostracized as a social pariah slowly, but it's gathering steam. And we'll talk about this more on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. But Jay, I wanna thank you for uh, your participation in this special edition of Rediscovering America because our democracy is in jeopardy. We are at threat and I'm glad we're taking the time to at least address it as best we can. And hopefully more people will take and pay attention to this and actually start speaking up, be it on social media or with our congressmen or with their neighbors and family and not go along as Arnold Schwarzenegger described in Germany, just go along with it. It's time to speak up and I think that's happening. So I wanna thank you, Jay. And- um, Thank you, Tim. And we will, we will post the Michael Moore video so people can see what he said. It's very interesting, very thoughtful. All righty. All right, well, I'm Tim Apicella, host for Rediscovered America. Join us tomorrow, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. More about this for sure. Aloha, everyone.